All right, so here's the third part, and I think this will be the th final part of this uh, problem where we have the sort of given or experimentally determined distribution of traction along this cut face, this traction vector here, w, it's a function of y. We first showed that, in fact, the x and y components of those correspond to the normal and the shear tractions at a point. Then we went through and computed the average normal and the average shear on the face. So these were constant values, and we can see that actually, even though there is a normal traction distribution across the face, the net or the average value is zero because the bottom half was in compression and the top half was in tension. All right? And then the shear force was constant and actually the average equals the point in this case because the point was a constant, it's 2,000 PSI. All right, what I want to do this time, again, this is kind of a backwards approach. What I want to do now is actually compute the internal reaction forces. I want to compute the normal force the shear force, the internal shear reaction force, and then also the internal reaction moment. Okay? And I'm going to get those from this distributed load. So physically, this is really what happens. Inside a component, there's actually this internal distribution, W. Usually we don't know it. And then these average quantities, the average normal and shear stresses, which I just got rid of, uh, they're on the next page, these guys, and these net internal reaction forces and moments arise from them. They don't really physically exist. They're just a way that we handle the problem. Now, typically when we're solving these problems, we're going backwards. We use free body diagrams to compute these quantities, and then basically what we're going to do in the rest of this class is use those quantities to actually obtain these pointwise values. And we're going to use some assumptions on how beams deform, how shafts distort torsionally to get those. But here I'm going sort of in the opposite approach, giving you this actual distribution and then carrying it forward, just to show you physically how it goes. Okay, so let's get those now. All right, so... The net force, where did my pen go? Okay. The normal internal reaction force is what you get when you integrate the normal stress, and in this case it's a function of y, over the cross-sectional area. Okay? So, in other words, it's, if you just look at the x component here, which has this triangle profile, it's the total area under this curve, all right? We already know that area is zero, all right? All right. If you recall that we got the averaged normal stress from this relationship right you can see immediately the numerator here is actually n by definition the denominator here is the area, and this gives us the relationship we're used to seeing of the average normal stress being the force over the area. Okay? So this is the P of A. But here I'm trying to, sh hopefully you can appreciate a little bit 
how it arises from the actual force distribution. All right? Now, from the previous video, we already uh, calculated this quantity, right? And from last time, we figured out that this quantity was, in fact, zero. So that means from here that, obviously, n is also equal to zero. All right? But you could get that, actually, from this integration. You could perform this integration, which I think I actually probably did in the previous slide. You see back here, when I actually computed, this is the 1 over a. But this integration right here is actually the uh, integration of the numerator. Right? And you can see it comes out to zero. So you can just review that or do it again by yourself if you want. But you know it's going to come out to zero. All right, the shear is the area under the shear curve, if you will. So this is the integral of the pointwise shear stress over the area. Okay. And in this case, we already calculated this last time, but this one's easy enough to do. So it's y equals negative 5 to 5. Well, I'll just leave it this way. Let's leave it in terms of area for now. Where we already know that the pointwise shear stress is a constant. You can pull it out. This gives me. 2,000, the integral of the area. This is the actual area itself. So that gives me 2,000 PSI. This quantity here is the cross-sectional area. That's 10 inches squared. Oops. All right, pounds per inch squared. And that gives me that V is equal to 20,000 pounds. Okay? I should put units on here too. Okay? So the, the normal reaction, internal reaction force is zero in this case, and the internal reaction shear force is 20,000 pounds. Okay. The last quantity I want to do is the moment, and this is one that we haven't calculated before, so this will be a little different. I probably should redraw this. Okay. Let's draw a little bit bigger. I should draw this first, but I'll try to be neat about it. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. I'm just kind of redrawing this. And well, actually, I got about the same size. That's pretty good. And uh, let's get when we're talking about the um, moments. We're talking, you know, the internal reaction moment. It's going to turn out to be the moment around the centroid. So we're going to take the moments around this center point. I'll call that point O. All right? And now let me draw just a little differential area element. I should use my red pen, but I lost it now. Okay. So remember, we actually have Differential force here, all right? Here is the moment arm. So this is the moment arm R, okay? So this produces a moment around O, a differential moment around O of R cross df, right? So that's the moment around the point O. So if we do this in 2D, 
you can see what this is. You know, we can do the Moron calculation. It's actually going to turn out to be, right, this distance, which is actually just y, that is the moment arm, times the normal uh, component of the stress, okay, that's the normal stress at the point, times the differential area, right? So this, this stress is the traction times the differential area. That gives me the x component of that differential force. And it's really just this. That's the only one that's going to produce a moment on O. The y component, the shear component, right, which would be this quantity, this vector, obviously has no moment arm around O, so that doesn't produce a moment around O, okay? So only the x component does. All right. So this moment turns out to be the y distance times the normal stress times the differential area. And now this is kind of incorrect because here I've got a scalar on the right-hand side and a vector on the left-hand side. But this vector, you know, when I do the when you're doing the planar ones, right, using the right-handed rule, this actually gives me the direction pointing out of the plane. So that would be x, y, that's in the positive k direction, okay? So that's our differential moment. Or if you want to do the scalar in the plane, we could just get the component y. All right? Okay. And now sometimes people say, well, what about on this side where it flips around. Well, the fact that you have the y being negative uh, automatically corrects the sign convention. Okay? All right. So now if we wanted to get the total moment, this is the internal reaction moment. This is the integral of the differential moment. Okay? So this is the integral over the area y normal stress dA okay and what I've done here is you know this holds for any uh, stress distribution okay I haven't put in this exact distribution yet this picture I drew up here is just uh, for some general distribution okay where I know the stress over that face all right it's the same all right now let's plug in our actual uh, distribution and compute the internal reaction moment from that. Okay? All right. So we know now that this quantity here is 1000 times y, and we know that this, the dA, is going to be the thickness times dy, we know the thickness in this case is 1. That transforms this integral to a dy integral. So now we get the moment is the integral from minus 5 to 5 of y times 1,000 y dy. Or we get a y squared. We take the 1,000 out, so it's 1,000 integral from minus 5 to 5 y squared dy and now we take the any derivative let's do it this way so now I get 1000 times y cubed on 3 evaluated at minus 5 to 5 okay so that's 333.3, you know, repeating. Just took the 3 divided by 1,000. And now y cubed at 5 is uh, 125, 120. Yeah. 5 squared is 25. And then times 5 is 125. Then a minus 
minus 25 cubed, right? So just to kick, take care of the signs, minus 25 cubed is minus 125. We take the negative of it. This becomes a positive 125. So this becomes 3, 3, 3.3 3 times uh, 125 plus 125, 250, and that ends up being 83,325, and the units of that, if you go through, this was pounds, that's uh, inches, and then we have, um, oh, sorry, this is pounds per inch squared, here's area that's inch squared, so that gives me pounds, and then here is uh, length, so this gives me pounds per inch, or inch pounds. Okay, so that's the total moment, all right? And that's where it comes about. So uh, just to show you again, um, let's talk about just the X distribution of the stress, right? I mean, I'm so, let's just talk about the, the fact that we have this uh, distribution of the normal stress that's uh, skew symmetric around the Y axis. So when we integrate this and get the averaged normal stress, this quantity, right, the fact that we have a net force acting this direction and a net force acting the other direction, let me draw those, right, the fact that we actually have, I'll draw the blue to make it look a little different, right, the fact that we have a net force on this top half acting in the x direction and an equal and opposite net force acting in the minus x direction, they cancel out when we get the averaged uh, normal stress, okay, becomes zero, right? The, they uh, show up in the reaction moment. So if you look at this, this is generating a couple that's flipping around, okay? And so then that pops up and that gives us what we have here, all right? Okay. All right. So uh, that's all I'm going to do with this problem. This is stuff that's not quite in your book at this point in time. Uh, your book takes a pretty classic approach to it. But I think uh, if you struggle through this and try to understand what's going on here, it might help you with the relationship between what's actually physically going on with the state of stress throughout a cross-section and how that relates to these abstract quantities that we actually use in our mechanics and materials analysis. Okay? Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, actually, if you could give me some feedback on whether that helped or whether that was too mathematical, that would be uh, beneficial. Thank you.